this session of Look at the Book, we're going to focus on 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. And there are two principles that I want to illustrate. The first one would be uh, beware of Bible slogans without context. And the second one is a little more difficult to express. I have to back up and say, if, if God is, if there's a God, an infinite, eternal, sovereign, wise God, who created all things, sustains all things, guides all things. And if God, that God, inspired a book, then we would naturally expect the book to be God-saturated. Because if God is, he is the most important reality in the universe. It can't be otherwise. If, if God holds everything in being in the palm of his hand, carries the uni- universe around in his, in his side pocket like a little peanut, then God is clearly the most important and supreme reality in the universe. And if he inspired a book, then we would expect the book to be true to reality and that he would be supreme in it. And so here's, here's a principle that I commend to you. Glad expectancy of God-centeredness in reading the Bible pays off. I think I think people miss a lot that's in the Bible. They don't get the payoff of the Bible because they don't go with a sense of glad expectancy of God-centeredness. So, Father, as we, as we tackle these verses, grant that we would be protected from slogans that can distort texts because they ignore context, and grant that we would have a glad expectancy of God-centeredness throughout your word so that we won't miss God-centered things that are very important to see. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So first, the saying is trustworthy. Now, that doesn't mean, if you think about it, that some things in the letter or in Paul's writings are untrustworthy and others are trustworthy. It means that there are sayings that circulate and some of those sayings are trustworthy and some of those sayings are not trustworthy. And Paul is using one that is trustworthy. So this right here, he's saying, this is a common expression in the early church, and this one I vouch for completely with my authority. It is trustworthy. And then this word for, the saying is trustworthy for, and then the the content of the saying turns out also to be the ground of, of its trustworthiness. And I would I would just point out this. The word trustworthy here in English is very much like the word faithful here. God is faithful, and that's part of the saying, right? Well, in Greek, these are identical words. This is the word pistos, this is the word pistos. The, the saying is faithful, and the God is faithful, and that's what makes sense out of this word for here. The saying, which is going to be about God's trustworthiness, is trustworthy 
because God himself is trustworthy. So the, the for here, you might say, is both uh, content and ground for why this is, is trustworthy here. Now, structurally, notice these things. We have a, a pair of positive statements. If we have died with him, which is a good thing to do because Romans 6 describes baptism as we have been buried with him into his death. And if we've been buried with him, we're going to live with him. So this is a common teaching in the early church. If we've died with Christ by identifying with him through faith and been united with him in his death, we will live with him forever. And and then there's this increase. This is not identical. This is die with him. And now, having died with him and uh, renounced our own private preferences in order to adapt and conform to his life and his preferences, if we endure by that kind of self-death or self-denial, if we endure with him, this also increases. We go from life to reigning. We will reign with him. So dying with him moves to a lifetime of enduring with him, and living with him moves to reigning with him. So the first pair is positive and a beautiful and glorious promise to those of us who may feel, which is true, that the Christian life is often one of much endurance and suffering and perseverance and denial and death to self. And the great reward is life and reigning with Christ forever if, if, something is true, namely if God is faithful to those promises. And then the second pair here is negative. If we deny him, if we are faithless, deny him what? Deny him how? Well, here we have endured, counting on him to be worthy of living with, counting on him to be worthy of reigning with, and regarding all the things that we're having to sacrifice or deny ourselves as less valuable than he is. And here, we don't do that. We deny him. We deny that he is to be preferred above the things that we want in this life. And so we say he, his, his reign is not worthy of suffering for. And so we deny, we deny him here. We deny him here. And the promise is, if we say that he is not more valuable than all the things we are enduring uh, without, then he's going to deny us what? The privilege of being with him, the privilege of reigning with him. He denies us that privilege. He renounces us. So if you forsake Jesus and count him as less valuable than than life and all of its pleasures, then he will show you that you will not have him as an eternal treasure and you will not live with him as an eternal treasure. Or another way to say it is, if we are faithless, that is, if we don't have faith in him, if we don't trust him, if we consider him to be untrustworthy, then what happens? Well, he remains quite trustworthy. And trustworthy first to this, because he is totally committed to himself, for he cannot deny himself. Now, right at this point, this principle comes into play. Beware of Bible slogans without context. How many times have you, I don't know, I have heard many times people quote this out of context and they say, if we're faithless, he remains faithful. And they mean faithful to us, to save us, which is exactly the opposite of what it's saying. He's already said, if we deny him, which is the same as being faithless, he's going to deny us, not save us. And he says here, the reason he's faithful is because he's faithful to himself. That is, he keeps his word here, and he keeps his word here. And therefore, beware 
of Bible slogans without context because this slogan, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, ripped out of its context has given a lot of people false assurance. And then this last principle, God, ex- glad expectancy of God-centeredness pays off. And, and right here's the payoff. If you don't get your back up about this, God does not, cannot, cannot deny himself. What does that mean? That means God is radically God committed. God is radically God centered. God is radically God honoring and God exalting. And why is that really good news? And the reason it's good news is because that truth, he cannot deny himself, is what it means for him to be faithful. And being faithful means these promises right here are going to come true. If you die with Christ, you're going to live with him. If you do endure with him, you're going to reign with him. And the reason you know you will is not because of anything in, in you. It's because of his faithfulness, which means not first his faithfulness to you, but his faithfulness to himself. So that if you die with him and you endure with him, he would never, ever deny his own value by turning you away when you have exalted his value by dying to the world and living with him and rejecting the world and enduring everything so that you might reign with him.